And suddenly there was a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting and it appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire sat upon their heads. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. I'm so glad that you're tuning in with these programs and learning the Word of God. We've been ministering out of uh, the book of Jeremiah, the last few programs. And today we're going to begin in 1 John. So if you have a Bible there, I'd love for you to join me. And I'd just like to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you for their families, their children, their household, Lord. I thank you for opening up the Word of God to them today, Lord, and breathing your Word upon their heart, Lord, opening their eyes, opening their ears, giving them a heart to understand and to be converted to you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit's ministry in a believer's life is the most important ministry because when Jesus ascended on high at the right hand of the Father, he poured out the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God is the great comforter. He is the third person of the Godhead. He is the eternal Spirit of God. And he has come to lead us and guide us into all truth, to bring all things to our remembrance. He is in our lives to glorify Christ. He is in our lives to honor Christ. And he is the living, the living word inside of us. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He proceedeth from the Father, and he receives from Jesus, and he shows it unto you. And so today we're going to begin in 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, he's talking to the church, he's talking to the believer. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. In the last programs we taught out of Jeremiah, how Jeremiah was called by God. God knew him before he was in his mother's womb and called him a prophet to the nations. So there's many false Christ and false spirits in the world today, false prophets. So this is giving a warning to the believer. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses, notice that word, you can underline it, confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And we learn throughout the year that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John 1.14, the Gospel of John 1.14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Begotten is not created. Jesus Christ, our Savior and King, was before Abraham. He was before the foundations of the earth. He always existed. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit share the eternal same nature, and that nature is a divine nature. 
And so if you go to verse 2 of 1 John chapter 4, Hereby know we the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. So the Bible talks about in 1 Timothy, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached to the Gentile nations. He was 100% God and 100% man. God was manifested in the flesh. Verse 3, And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the and this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. So the spirit of Antichrist is against Jesus Christ. It's against his deity. It's against his lordship. And it, the Antichrist spirit that rules over people is a spirit of darkness. He's the prince and the power of the air that works in the sons of disobedience. The Bible says that he blinds the mind and the heart of those that don't believe the gospel. Because the gospel is the good news, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. God was with him. Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen my father. Jesus was the express image of his father. Verse 4 of 1 John chapter 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When the Spirit of God's Son comes in you, when you have received him, you're born of his Spirit, justified by the blood of Christ, he imputes his righteousness to those who believe. The desires of God come inside you. A hunger and desire to know the Lord is inside you. He put a new nature in the inside you. He put a new heart on the inside you that he writes his word upon the tablets of your heart and in your mind. So it's saying here, we are of God, little children, have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He that's in the world is the enemy, the devil. Jesus called him a liar, the father of lies, the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, made a public display of them at the cross, triumphing over them in it. So when he spoiled them, he removed his power. He, the devil has no power. All power has been given unto Jesus in the heavens and the earth. All power belongs unto God. The, the devil will be in the lake of fire. Hell is created for the devil and his angels. The time of when the enemy is in hell, when God 
has conquered everything on this earth, that every enemy is under his footstool. And death is swallowed up in victory. See, Jesus, according to Hebrews, he tasted death for every person. And he destroyed him, that is the devil, who had the power of death. And how did he destroy him? He destroyed him at the cross, triumphing over him. Because Jesus Christ, our Lord, shed holy, innocent blood to remove the sin debt off of your life. Because he bore your sin in his own body. He bore your iniquity and transgression. He was wounded for your uh, iniquities. And he removed them at the cross when he shed his blood to forgive you of your sins. So he pours into you the spirit of his son. By grace you're saved, not of yourselves, but is the gift of God. You're only saved by the grace of God. It's God's divine favor. There's nothing in and of yourself that you could save your soul. The Bible says all the souls are mine, but the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Sin corrupts and erodes, but Jesus bore your transgression, bore your iniquity, and the Bible says by his stripes you're healed. When you look to Jesus, you're looking to the cross where he bore all your iniquity and transgression, sickness and disease. He carried it away. He buried it for never to be remembered. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes your transgression from you. And when you receive him, the Spirit of God's Son comes into your heart. You're born again. You're born again of the incorruptible Word of God that lives and abides forever. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when He comes in, He's the greater one. He's greater than the enemy that's against your life. He's greater than Him. Verse 5, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. Verse 6, we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Those that are not of God heareth not us, why? Because the the enemy has blinded their mind and their heart unless the glorious gospel of Christ Jesus shines into them. When God begins to open their eyes and open their ears, causes their stony heart to be softened, that they begin to hear the gospel, and they begin to believe that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God, who became the Son of Man, who bore our transgression upon the Calvary's cross. And it's through the power of his own blood and his sacrifice that delivers us from this present evil world. The Bible says here in verse 6, uh, 1 John chapter 4, we are of God, he that knows God hears us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of error will not hear the gospel truth. 
Their eyes are closed, their ears are closed. They have a heart of unbelief. Their heart has become hardened. When a person has a hard heart, it's called an evil heart of unbelief. Verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. This is talking to the believer. Let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. What we see in the world today is violence, hatred. That is not of God, it's of the devil. The devil feeds off of violence. He feeds off of division. He's a mastermind of evil. And he's the one that blinds the minds of the people. And Jesus said, arise and shine. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon you as a believer. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Spirit of God, Spirit of truth, who has come to glorify Christ in our life, we begin to speak his word with integrity and uprightness of heart, for he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except through him. Because of his holy sacrifice upon the cross, the redemption he paid for the souls of mankind, he's calling every people group, every nationality, every nation to repent before God and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Without Christ, there is no hope for those that are not saved. There's no hope to those that are unbelievers if they do not put their faith in Christ. When you repent before God, you're acknowledging the truth that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He is the Redeemer of your soul. That when you physically die, you would be in the presence of Almighty God. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. But if you rejected Jesus Christ in this lifetime, rejected his sacrifice that forgave you of your sins, rejected him and rejected the resurrection of Christ, it's eternal damnation. If you believe in a false prophet that is against Jesus Christ, you're believing a lie. If you died, you would be eternally lost in hell. Eternal life wouldn't be in your spirit. It's so important to know the truth. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. There's no freedom in a lie. There's no liberty and freedom in a lie. People that live a lie live in bondage and enslavement to their own sin nature. And that sin nature separates you from God. But Jesus came to bring new life in you. If you repent today, there's many watching, and you've been a non-believer for a long time. When you're hearing the gospel for the first time, this is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Jesus came into this world to save sinners. He came into this world to save us from our sins. 
the eternal spirit of Christ can enter your heart today as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be gloriously saved. We're going to still stay in 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 8, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So you see the world, hatred, violence, maliciousness, they don't know God. God is not in their thoughts. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. And all unrighteousness is sin. Verse 9, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten. Notice the word begotten. Begotten is not created. A created being cannot save your soul. Jesus came forth from the Father into this world, born of a virgin, born under the law, to redeem those that were under the law. God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. How do we live through him? By believing in him and receiving him, being born of his spirit. A brand new birth comes inside of your spirit. You're no longer alienated from God, but he calls you sons. Verse 10, wherein is love? Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He took your place. He actually delivered you as a believer from the wrath of God. Because the wrath of God abides on the unbeliever. And when, you, when a person repents and looks to the Lord Jesus, believes in their heart that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God, who became the Son of Man, and took on human flesh was the holy sacrifice that delivered your life from destruction. The only way you can be reconciled to God is through the death of Jesus Christ. It's not going to come any other way. It's going to come through him. And that came upon the cross of Calvary. Verse 11 Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. That's the greatest commandment that God gave, is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love thy neighbor as thyself. In the world, you don't see people loving their neighbor as themselves. You see backbiting, you see killing, you see destruction. You see people bowing down to graven images, false gods. It's all idolatry. It's all an abomination before God. If we love one another, verse 12, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Do you know, it speaks in the Word of God in the book of Hebrews, I believe, that Jesus ever perfected you, talking about the believer, perfected you before the Father in himself 
and how he perfected you was because of the sacrifice he made in your behalf. Verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. That's how you know. Hereby know we that we are, hereby know we that we dwell in him, dwell in him, and he in us because he's given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him. And he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. That's the love of God. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. We love him because he first loved us. If any man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God in whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother. This message is for you today. I am so glad that you watched this program. Stay tuned to the next program and you have a wonderful week. God bless you. Thank you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.